Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, and this is tips number 714, which is part three of a four-part series on making this pair of swivel vice jaws. Watch part 712 and 713, where I did the earlier steps, namely putting the serrations on and making the half hole. And in today's video, part three, I'm going to show you how to make the angles, which is really no big deal, but I want to show you several different ways of doing it, different ways of laying it out, and even making a 16 degree angle block to make the job easier. So let's get started. Remember now, you can get the drawing by going to My Heap, and I'll put that link in the description, and then you can print out this drawing if you should desire to do so. This is a 16 degree angle, however, you don't have to have an angle, you can lay it out according to the, the points here, in other words, that's quarter inch up right there, and then connect it to this corner right here. And there's a little bit of a variation there that I'll talk about here in a minute, but that's essentially what we're doing here is putting those angles on. Let me show you how to do it with the protractor. I already have some die on there and the height gauge is set for one-fourth of an inch. And I've scribed that line. This is what it looks like when it's finished and assembled. Now notice here on the one that I made there is a little bit of a flat here that never was machined. I put some red dye on this one to show you that. So I'm just machining up to that and the red part is 1 16th of an inch approximately. Now you can use any kind of protractor you want. I consider this type to be only semi-accurate but it certainly would do the job. This is a regular Sterrett one-sided protractor. I prefer for this application to use this double sider and I already have it set for 16 degrees. I put the work in the vise and just lay the protractor on and line it up with that point right there. Slide it back and forth till you find the, the sweet spot and scribe it. Flip the protractor over and do the same thing here on the other side. Now should you decide to lay it out as I just showed you, you're ready to mill. So you can take it, put it into the vice jaws like this, and then I like to, to take a parallel, I'm using the parallel as a spacer, and then a ruler blade and adjust the work so it's right on the mark and you can use a, a hammer for that until the layout line is perfectly parallel with the blade and then you're ready to mill that side and if you watch the video where I made this hammer head really that's the way I laid it out and set it up in the shaper and that's a very easy way for students to understand and uh, be able to do it pretty much accurately and uh, as a no-brainer. I have often talked about taper gauges or taper blocks. The problem with this set is there is no 16 degree so you would have to take the 10 and a 5 and a 1 and that gives you a too high of a dimension here, but that would be a very accurate 16 degrees right there. And this could be used for making the 16 degree angle block that I'm going to show you right now. I made 16 degree angle blocks, two of them, out of three quarter aluminum. They can be made very quickly just with a protractor and that is semi accurate long as you got a square corner right here and 
I'll show you a couple other ways to do it with these angle blocks and with a sign bar that would be even more accurate but I'm probably beating a dead dog here or is it a horse because you in fact could make one out of plastic you could make one out of wood with a bandsaw and a belt sander really in a matter of just a few minutes and it's better if they're thicker over the thin if you were going to make an angle block out of this piece of aluminum again we're back here to 16 degrees using those commercially made blocks it's just that they're very awkward because they're going to slide around but if you scribe the line on there it would be super accurate you have seen me use this little 3H sign bar and don't be afraid of a sign bar they're really very simple and then looking up the sign of you know what trigonometry is maybe you don't if you look up the sign of 16 degrees in here or you can do it on a scientific calculator which they have at the dollar store I noticed <laughs> see it, but there are a lot of these old books sitting around and that's in the machinery handbook too but the sign of 16 degrees is 0.276 and then we have to multiply that times three in order to give you the amount of blocks that you would need so here's gauge blocks I have a 700 and I have a 128 together which will give exactly 16 degrees now this is too high to use directly in the vise that I'm using bigger vices might be able to uh, to hold the sign bar like that but the height there is a little bit awkward but you could use this also in your layout but you'd have to use some parallels under it but I'm probably telling you way way too much let's go over to the mill all right let's do some actual cutting and I had made two of those blocks 16 degrees in my rehearsals the higher one here works better in this vise without using any parallel so just plop that into the vise and put the work in there and you need that little quarter inch line there so you know how high to put the work you don't want to hit the vise and there you can see the layout line but on the other piece there will be no layout line because I won't need it other than the quarter inch mark all right we're ready to mill by the way, I did tram the head in since I had it tilted. I'm using a three insert inch and three quarter cutting head here and I'm ready to go. The vise is tightened down, wear your safety glasses and uh, the chips really fly with this type of cutter. fourth done and you can see that I left that little bit of a sixteenth inch flat spot right there now I have to take the burrs off before I flip it around and do the second side
one down and one to go. And this, of course, I will do off camera. See you in a minute. Okay, there they are, and they're looking good. Now, I know it takes extra time to make the block, but it sure makes the milling and the setup easy and consistent, so the angles are all exactly the same. Well, that concludes part three, where we make this little part. I know it doesn't look very complicated, and I'll show you two different methods of making it. So, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. This is Mr. Pete.